Vladimir Klitschko on Facebook answering questions that have been sent into the Sky Sports Facebook page. So here we go. Are you ready, Vladimir? I am. Okay, first one comes in from Gavin Howe. And it says, if you beat Fury, would you want to target a fight with Anthony Joshua next year? I think that uh, Anthony Joshua first has to fight on uh, December, I don't know exactly 12th. the date, 12th. And uh, let's do it step by step. First of all, I need to conquer Tyson Fury. Then Anthony needs to take care of his business. And then next year, we'll see how the cookie crumbles. Okay, next one comes in from Jack Bolton and he says, after being dominant for so long, uh, now is the WBC title and holding all four world title belts a priority for you before retirement? I've been trying to get the WBC title and to unify all of the titles and due to some internal boxing politics it was impossible. So right now Dante Wilder is the champion of WBC he has his mandatory uh, fight against uh, Alexander Povetkin, so we'll see how that's gonna go. And uh, obviously, it would be nice to unify all the titles. And if that, for some reason, will not work, then it doesn't matter. I'm the champ. Next one comes in from Max Hallam, who says, which heavyweight do you feel poses the biggest threat to you and gives you the toughest time in the ring? The biggest threat and uh, the scariest and dominant heavyweight is sitting in the front of this camera. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. The fight against myself is the worst fight. Because usually if you fight yourself, philosophically speaking, you're going to lose. Or win. But it's the toughest opponent. So I hope that none of you guys are going to face yourself to fight yourself and with yourself. But otherwise, any other opponent that I'm facing or was facing, I'm going to face um, are dangerous and uh, I cannot snooze, I cannot uh, lose my attention, my focus because I know that's going to have bad consequences. So failure is not an option for me. Next question comes from Stuart Weatherall and he says, do you think you will leave a positive legacy on heavyweight boxing? I will not decide what I'm going to leave as a legacy. You guys out there decide and I'll let you to decide. I'm enjoying myself as an insider and inside of the boxing ring and I do because I do it or do boxing because I love what I do and I'm enjoying myself and everything else is going to come afterwards when I retire you guys decide whatever or wherever you want to want to put me in in history or as a legacy. Okay this one comes in from Mike Francis Charles Parperis which is a long name. Uh, do you think Tyson Fury is going to be a world champion even if he loses to you? I believe that any heavyweight contender, and uh, Tyson Fury is official contender for two versions, WBO and uh, WBA, so he definitely deserves the title shot, and obviously if somebody is standing as a number one, want to become a champion, could become a champion. question is, is the champion going to allow him to become a champion? So I'm not going to make it too complicated, but um, I would say any one has a chance. And I know the slogan of my brother's um, motivational uh, side, impossible is nothing. Moving on to Sarah Eastie and she writes, if you could fight any of the past champions, who would you choose and why? Please, please, please don't put me in the ring with anybody from the history because the attitude of a champion is, it doesn't matter who's the front of me, I'm gonna conquer him. So I don't want to put myself with Tyson, Mike Tyson, or Evander Holyfield, or Joe Lewis, or Rocky Marciano, because I know their attitude. We cannot ask them, so don't ask me who is going to win. So I will let the champions be in history, and I admire them, and I'm still looking actually up to them. So now is my time, and it doesn't matter who is at the front of me, I'm going to take care of business. This one comes in from Peter Lovell. Which current boxer do you rate as the best, apart from yourself? As the best uh, currently? Well, we have uh, Dante Wilder as WBC champion, so you have to give credit. Uh, he's a champion. He has defeated his title to us once or twice already. And um, I think that uh, two, probably top five, are belonging. Um, Tyson Fury is definitely there. Anthony Joshua is there. 
Um, I think uh, that even Dylan White is there, so he's a top contender too. I uh, I believe that there are some other names that I haven't uh, mentioned yet, but uh, they're still pretty pretty good. And some of them were my sparring partners in training camps, and uh, they showed tremendous skills. So we'll see how they're going to develop themselves, and suddenly they're going to pop up like Mike Tyson one day. He was 20 years old, and nobody would have thought that he could be, or could become the most dominant and famous heavyweight uh, in history. This question moves on from that one then. This comes in from Ryan Jason Taffinder, who asks, after years of below par heavyweights, has the current crop of up and comers given you a new lease of life and motivation? Well, that's true. There's uh, a lot of people that give me motivation, but um, also my professionalism. I'm a true professional athlete, and uh, boxing, that's actually the best thing in my life, what I can do at the best. And that's my motivation, to become better, to raise the bar, to find out where the peak of the mountain of my performance. I don't know where the peak of the mountain is. Everybody's looking for it as well, so I am keep on going. You never stand still, because that means you're going to fall back. So I'm just moving forward. And this one comes from Matt Dunnycliffe. Uh, what's your favorite flavor of crisps? Have you ever tried <laughs> cheesecake at 12 o'clock midnight with a cup of tea? <laughs> so good. Better than crisps. <laughs> Better than crisps. OK, we've got a few questions that have come in from some of the British boxers here. Uh, this one comes in from uh, one of our cruiserweights, Tony Bellew. Uh, he says, do you genuinely believe this guy, I mean, I think he means Tyson Fury, has any chance of defeating you by a knockout? Uh, anyone that uh, weights over 100 kilos, uh, which I don't know in stones, um, can be dangerous. Anyone. So you cannot underestimate. And uh, there's a lot of motivation. Sometimes people are even bad at the fight night than they usually are. And because of their motivation, if they're really motivated and really want to make it. So I'm expecting from my opponents to be better than they usually are. And so I'm expecting from Tyson Fury as well. Okay, this one comes in from our welterweight world champion, James DeGale. Uh, which one went m meant more to you? Winning the, uh, sorry, um, this one comes in from super middleweight champion, James DeGale, sorry. Um, James DeGale says, which one means more to you? Winning the Olympic gold medal or your first world title? Olympic gold medal was the entrance into the big world of sports. Without Olympic gold medal, I wouldn't be sitting here and talking to you guys. That was my motivation, to keep on going, to switch to the professional ring, and uh, it changed my life. And I remember before I went to the Olympics, one of um, uh, Mr. Borzov, the multiple Olympic champion in light athletic, he was Minister of Sports of Ukraine, he said, guys, you should be so motivated because any of you, if any of you going to win any medal, especially gold medal, from that point of life, your life is going to be changed to the better. So that happened in my case. I'm uh, definitely a big fan of Olympic Games and uh, Olympic sport made me who I am. I cannot underestimate my first title, that, which I won four years later when I was 24. There was something also great and good, but the highlight is probably the Olympic gold. Finally, this one comes in from uh, Bantamweight World Champion Jamie McDonnell, who I'm sure you know is a twin. Um, he asks the question, I know you're not a twin, obviously, but uh, do people ever stop you in the street and ask you for an autograph, thinking it's Vitaly? Uh, I have a better story for you guys. <laughs> I am in the city of Kiev, and uh, I have um, like a little demonstration of, of people, little elder people, and as soon as they saw me, they got into me and they said, Listen, our streets are bad. We have no light. We have no hot water. We have uh, so many issues and problems. And I said, people, how can I help you? They said, listen, you're a mayor of the city. You can help us. I said, you're so damn wrong about it because I'm not. They asked me, did you resign? I said, no, because I have a brother <laughs> that is a mayor of the city. Vladimir, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. And best of luck with your fight on November the 28th. Thank you very much.